Hey, Bart Miller here with Cycling Strong 2014 Interbike, and we are having a blast. So, I caught up with Nick at Scott Bikes. You all know how much I love my Scott bike. Leadville this year, crushed it on that bike, had a great time. But Nick's like, hey, I got something super cool I want to show you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, you're not going to believe this. I said, well, let's see it. Proof's in the pudding. Show us your stuff. What you got, Nick? Well, you may want to rephrase that, but okay, <laughs> let's go. Um, you know, when you're riding a bike, you go down, you end up with the road rash. Yeah. So we got a new material yeah. uh, that we developed with Shola. I'll show you the kit. It's the RC ProTech kit. Uh, but this is really good. Feel that? So it feels like sand. It's like going down on the road. That right. is sandpaper for sure, going down on the road. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Are you kit. kidding me? All right. This is how you take one for the team. Go take on. one for the team. I mean, look at that. He's putting some effort into that right there. That's no messing around. I'm telling you, she's got muscles. <laughs> wow, that is super amazing. Show the camera that. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not see that. That was super cool. All right, so we're going to go over and take a look at the kit. That is amazing, though. Nice uh -huh. job. Very All right, fun. let's go show you the kit. All right, we're going to walk over. Stay tuned. You just saw a sander being placed on Nick's arm with a material. I mean, this stuff is not super, like, thick. I mean, you saw his arm. Totally comes out great. We're over here now, and we're looking at the actual kit itself. Explain right. this to us. So this is the RC ProTech kit. So RC is our racing concepts. So what we've done with this material, and it was developed with Shola, which is a Swiss fabric company. And they're big on a lot of developing a lot of fabrics for a lot of industries, from motorcycling to, to camping, skiing, all sorts of stuff like that. So two years we spent developing this material with them. Uh, we have it. It's a Scott proprietary product. We've got it for two years. So we looked at a lot of crashed jersey. If you saw yeah. the tour this year, there yeah. was a lot of oh, crashes man. at the beginning that first week. And we looked at jerseys where a lot of the impacts were. And it's across the shoulders and, of course, down the side paddle on the shorts. Yeah, yeah. So that's where we've added this material. Amazing. So you can see, like, it's, it stands out here yeah. from the texture. You can feel it. Yeah. But it's still, I mean, like you pointed out earlier, it's still a very thin, it's very stretchable material. And we, only, we put it in these areas because these are the high impact areas. Right. So we didn't want to gain a lot of weight in the jersey. We're like, right. where's it going to make the most sense? And here and here is, is where it's at. So it's yeah, the, the other material. amazing part about this that I loved about it is, is once you did, you know, you had the abrasion on there, right. sandpaper's on there, right? Right. But even when you got done, it doesn't look like there was no, anything this, done to the material. This, yeah, I mean, this, it's not like, you know, I mean, I, mean, I would buy it just to save my arm. Let, right. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, yeah, I it mean, comes out like it looks brand new. Exactly. And that's because the it's material crazy. is impregnated. It's a carbon uh, impregnation in the material, in the fabric itself. So it won't come out. You can wash it. It's Nothing's going to happen. So, you know, whether you ride and crash on this once or 40 times, yeah. hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah. That might be a sign that you should yeah. stick to another yeah, sport. sport. <laughs> um, you know, it's going to be the same. It's always there. You guys, I've got a few high school mountain bike kids right now that I'm telling you, I've got to buy this for. <laughs> They've got a lot of crashes, and this is gonna save some kids and some moms a lot of money. So Nick, absolutely cool product. We're gonna keep going through all the Scott products that they have and anything that Nick will share with us, because we are in love with the Scott bikes and Scott products. So if there's anything else, Nick, where are we going next? Um, well, let's have a look. We got Obviously, we gotta talk mountain bikes. We gotta go mountain bikes. Okay, so let's do, do you wanna do agro mountain bike? How about downhill? I mean, you're, you're not a downhill guy. I'm not guy. really a downhill guy, but let's go talk it if it's, you want. It's fun, right? All right let's do it. It's cycling. All right. All right, so we're going to go right into mountain bikes. So we're going to check this out. I'm going to turn the mic over to Nick. He's going to walk us through first big downhill bikes, then we'll go right to cross country. Most of you know I'm riding the Scott Premium uh, XX1 on it right now. Absolutely love it. But we need to find out about all that Scott has. So let's walk through bikes, Nick. Okay. Well, thanks, Bart. Um, so this is the new Gambler. Um, we redesigned it this year from the ground up. Looks pretty similar to last year, but there's, I think the only part that relates to last year is like this piece here. Wow. Um, it's designed around a 27.5 wheel. Obviously, there's a lot of momentum in that. We've kind of really been pioneering that in the last couple of years. So it's 27.5, but you can also run 26 in it. And actually, if you run a 26 inch, inch wheel in there, it actually rides better than the current 26 specific bike. So we worked a lot on that. You've got adjustable chainstay length on it. You've got adjustable bottom bracket height on it. You've got adjustable head angle on it. I'm like, this is, if there's a Formula One of downhill, this is the bike. 
So we spend a lot of time looking at everything that we can adjust to make the bike ride smoother and faster. So, I mean, that, that's a quick overview. I and mean, we'll go from one extreme. This is the, these guys just go downhill fast. And then if we'll go over to this one. Okay, so right there, I'm gonna just say one thing. So right there, if you have questions on that bike, make sure you comment below so we can get those answered for you. Don't just let your questions go because when you're looking at these bikes, you need to know what you need to know. So make sure you comment below, subscribe to the channel. Okay, let's keep going. Go ahead, Nick. All right, I mean, the Sparks have been around for a, for a while now. Obviously, All my Ni friends ride it now. And Nino won two races on it this year, two World Cups. I think actually the last two. Yep. Um, and rode it out at Worlds at the week, last weekend as well. So again, this really is the cross-country steed of full suspension Absolutely. bikes. You know, a lot of things that's going on with it. This one here is the RC, the racing concept. It's HMX frame, so it's the highest modulus carbon that we do. And then with all, as with all the uh, full suspension bikes from Scott, there's a couple of key things that we have. Twin lock technology. You know, you're familiar with that. You've got the three modes, open, traction control, and locked out. You're riding on the fire road, you've got that thing locked out for best pedaling efficiency. It gets a little bit more rocky, put that traction control, and you can really feel it almost like hug the ground, that, that traction. And then obviously when the fun part for downhill, open it up and you've got the full travel. Yeah, so I just want to talk a little bit. Obviously, this is my favorite bike. I, you know, I've rode it the last two years in Leadville. And I'm here to tell you, when you're in the middle setting on this bike, and, and most of you, I've had questions on this, so I'm going to answer it once again. This right here controls this shock and this shock at the exact same time. So you're not just controlling this and then flipping a lever on this shock. This does both shocks at the exact same time. So when you're in the middle of this and you're actually riding, it's sometimes a lot easier on your body and you really don't lose a lot. You all know I put an SRM crank on, I mean, uh, yeah, crank arm on there and everything. I'm reading the power. I can tell you I lose very little power in this bike in that mode, but the comfort on the body is amazing. So I just did Rebecca's Private Idaho, for instance. You guys all know that big race, uh, 100 miles on gravel. I actually rode my mountain bike and beat a ton of people on their cross bikes with the comfort of this bike and never had one flat. So super, there, I don't think there's a better bike out there. Uh, I just tested the Cannondale bike and I'm not in love. I mean the shock adjustment on this one right here, I actually bought it, so I've got one. I would take this bike over it hands down. It's just, it's just an amazing bike. So sorry not to yeah. brag too much, but I, <laughs> I really, really course. love the bike, yeah. Well, and I think, you know, one other thing that, w that we didn't mention is more than just putting a trail tune on it where it, it stiffens the suspension up and shrinks it down from 120 to 100, oh. it actually corrects your geometry. Really? So oh, I didn't know a, that. a lot of them, when you go to a trail mode, it yeah. sets it in that sagged position. But you bought that bike because you wanted the agile handling, yeah. but now you've sagged it through, you've slackened the head angle and slowed stuff down. You go to trail, the traction control mode, yeah. it goes and puts it back in stock geometry. Oh, so, cool. so that's another thing. And then of course, at the base of the shock eye, yep. we can actually adjust geometry as well right. by undoing the two bolts, yep. pop the little horseshoe washer out, yep. flip it round and you raise the bottom bracket six millimeters, steepen your head angle by half a degree, right. which doesn't seem a lot, but if you tried it, it's like having a different bike. If there's areas that you're riding, you're like, oh, I'm hitting the pedals a lot. You flip that, and all of a sudden, like only six millimeters, you're not hitting pedals anymore, and the front end's a lot more agile to maneuver through the rocks. Awesome. So, uh, I was trying to think of shock-wise. I know last year, I think you changed shocks, right, on this bike, is that correct? Yeah, this time last year, we went with Fox. Right, um, right. Before that, we've been running a DT. That's what I'm running. Okay. Um, we run the Fox on the front, but now we can, because we're running a Fox, you know, CTD based yep. shock yep. and front and rear, we can work with those guys. They're great partners for yep. us. We can develop the spring rate so that it, the bike is balanced. Perfect. When it's in open or any of the modes, yep. front and rear are perfectly balanced. There's Excellent. no unevenness, right. you know, which good. goes back to that pedaling efficiency. Yeah. Okay, what's next? What's next? Um, how about a hardtail? Okay, let's go look at our All right. Well, you saw the spark, that's the full suspension. We've had great success with that with, uh, with Nino. Yeah. And then, this is his other weapon of choice, the scale. I mean, he's won two world championships on the scale. His bike's on the outside here, 17 pounds, a clear, a clear winning machine. You know, a couple of things, standout features on a scale, obviously lightweight, but you can see at the rear end here has the SDS, which is the shock damping system. 
so that you can see how the stays is kind of flattened. Yep. You know, you can see it across the board here, and that gives you that vertical compliance. So that it's allowing the rear end to kind of get flex a little bit yeah. and absorb some bumps. So if you're absorbing the bumps, it's allowing the wheel to track better. Again, it's pedaling efficiency. You don't want that rear wheel spinning and you lose traction. Right. So we have that. The, idea, the rear ends on the bikes, on all the bikes, are adaptable. They come with the bike. You can go a 142 12 mil, 135 12 mil, or 135 5 millimeter standard quick release. So awesome. you've got a spare set of wheels. You can make this frame or any of these, these frames fit the wheels that you've got. And another thing is too is all the bikes, they're available in either 27.5 or 29. The 900 series, that's a 29 inch wheel bike. 700 series are 27 fives. Same spec, same price. You know, you decide your wheels. Everyone asks me like, what's the best size wheel? I'm like, <laughs> there isn't a best size. Yeah. You have to look at where you ride and your riding styles. Yeah. You know, race bikes, I think there's a lot of choice. And if you're up in Monterey, like where Sea Otter is, I think yeah. you were there. Um, it's very flowy. 29 yeah. is the way to go, but if yeah. it's a stops and starts and things, then you may want to look at 27. Yeah. Um, also for the height of people, we took a 27, 29s out of the Contessa line because we were getting feedback from a lot of the girls and women riding in Europe that as much as 29 was good, it was a little slower to steer for them. It took a bit more energy. So 27 for, a, for smaller riders, you get all the benefit of a taller guy riding a 29 if you run 27. Very cool. All right, well, thank you for covering everything on the bikes. Is there any other road stuff or anything like that you want to talk about? Or well, we... road, I mean, if we want to talk road and we're still talking about going fast, we have a new Plasma 5. Yeah, let's go look at go it. Go and check that thing Absolutely. out. Absolutely. All right, so let's talk road a little bit. All right, well, take it away. you know, we have heard a lot about speed and controlling it and everything. So, you know, speed is our business and business is good right now. Yeah. Um, so this is the Plasma 5. We launched it earlier in the year with Sebastian Kinley who was third at Ironman last year in Kono. He went out and did European Championships at Frankfurt, smashed the course records by eight and a half minutes. So that was a big whew, sigh of relief, the bike works. Um, so some of the features, we, we put a whole new front end on the bike, integrated the steerer through to keep it all nice and tight. You've got the drinking, and then you've got food storage. So this bike is adaptable. You can get a different front end for it if you wanted to do just time trials. Okay. So it's a time trial bike, but the also, we'll be selling it more of a, as a tri-bike. A um, lot of the other stuff that you can see, we've got the turbo uh, seats, uh, chain stays on it, help just with that airflow, keeping it really tight, really clean. Um, wind tunnel testing, we spent a lot of wind tunnel time actually with actual riders pedaling. It's all well and good putting a bike in the tunnel right. and having it sit there, but somebody has to be on it. When you yeah. put a rider on a bike, yeah. that changes everything. Yeah. I mean, you know that. Yeah. So when we can actually have Sebastian Kinlay, Luke McKenzie, Jody Swallow, any of these people actually riding it, all different body types yeah. riding it and take data. That's how you build the best, yeah. best all round bike. So we spent a lot of time, we spent a lot of time with Orica and uh, with IAM for the time trial, because the time trial setup is different from somebody doing Ironman. Yeah. You know, those guys have the luxury of doing maybe a 60K time trial, then they go back and get a massage. Right. But you know, you do a, you do a triathlon, you're out there an Ironman for 112 miles then, yeah. hey, surprise, you've got to run a marathon. Exactly. So the position and stuff is very different. So that's why we've had to make bikes adaptable for two different disciplines. Very cool, yeah. Super good looking bike, and I've only heard great things about it. Looks like everything is obviously integrated in the system for all the shifting and uh, all your brakes and everything like that. I mean, super, yeah. super Yeah, I mean, cool we, you can see it's all hidden in, uh, in behind here. There's a proprietary brake system. You can run it with DI2, yeah. internal routing cables I'm here and come out. Um, or like this one with the, with the SRAM stuff on it, we hit the brake under here. So again, keeping it all nice and, nice and clean. Width of the wheel, can you use a 25 on it? Yes, you can. You still have clearance? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so if you have any questions on this bike, make sure you comment below and subscribe to the channel. And I think we've covered most of, is there another bike you want to cover? I mean, I can talk bikes all day long. You, you got another road bike? Sure, let's do the Solace. Okay, Solace so disc, it. it's all new. Where's it at? Just the other side. All right, well, I mean, the last one I'll show you guys, and this is an important segment. Um, this is the Solace. I'm going to show you this one because it's all new for next year. It's the disc version. Uh, but the technology that's in this is found in the other models of Solace as well. So it's what we call the our comfort. I don't, I don't like calling it a comfort bike because it makes it sound like the bike is all soft and everything like that, but totally the opposite. What we've done is we've taken tried and true geometry, 
you know, our foils, our addicts, you know, people love the way those bikes feel. So we're like, okay, let's keep all that. We know that's a package that works, but we'll add in the comfort side of it. So you can see we took, and on the regular bike, we took the brake from up here, right. mounted it down here, yep. so there's no uh, brake bridge on it. I mean, look at these stays, you know? So that's giving you that vertical compliance again. You hear a lot about that in the industry. It's a key part, stopping the bike, you know, keeping the bikes to absorb stuff. And having these super skinny stays allows to, to build in the compliance. We also have a custom layup in the seat post. So we can tune again that compliance. Like if somebody says, oh, it feels too soft, take it out, put a regular seat post in and you've just tuned, this, you've tuned the compliance of the bike. Another thing is they're an asymmetrical rear end. What does that mean? It means that this side, the right hand side of the bike is actually the tube shapes and sizes are actually bigger than they are on the, the non-drive side. Why is that? Well, this is the side where all the power is going through, but all the force goes through this crank, down the stays, the derailleur and everything. So the stays, for example, are like a millimeter and a half to two millimeters taller and in diameter than they are on the non-drive side. The seat stay, this is like a millimeter bigger on the, non -dri on the drive side to the non-drive side. And then other things like the down tubes, they're size specific, there's a lot of talk about that. We've been doing it the last couple of years. On a 58, the diameter and the tube shape on a 58 is three millimeters bigger than it is on a 49. So we've been doing tubes, specific tubes for different sizes for a few years now. This, and you know, we go to the power delivery. This bottom end is very similar to the Addict and the Foil, which are the guys riding at the Tour de France. Right. So you don't want the bike doing that when you push down on the pedals. This is what we call the power zone. So it's big, it's beefy, very little flex in it and then but you want to be comfortable you want to ride for hours yeah, if you're riding for hours and you're comfortable you're enjoying cycling and that's ultimately what it's all about Amen. so all right cool so that'll tell you a little bit about everything that scott's going on right now and uh, we hope that uh, if you have questions once again comment below check out the other videos nick thank you so much for taking that time for our audience and for everybody to get to know the bikes and what's coming out this year we really appreciate it yeah thanks for letting me all right get out there ride your bike have fun Stay tuned for more uh, videos, Cycling Strong. Talk to you soon.